Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video uploaded by the elder Apostle Gabar, Daily Edification 4. Subscribe, be edified. The title of the video is Did the Lord's Original Apostles Come to America? The Race to the Ends of the Earth. Okay. And um, Lord willing, um, I'm going to go into it and answer the question. And you brothers and sisters be edified because to the average Israelite, okay, um, this is a crazy question. Okay, to a Christian, this is a bugged out and crazy question to ask. All right, but prophetically, and according to the Holy Scriptures, the, fu the, the fullness, the volume of the book, this can be proven that yes, okay, the Lord's disciples would be in America, which prophetically we know is Babylon the Great, preaching this word. Okay, this is the book of Acts, the first chapter in the sixth verse. Now, this is after Yahweh Shai resurrected. Okay, and pretty much for 40 days and 40 nights after he resurrected from the dead, he broke bread with particular brothers and sisters. You know, imagine those conversations. Imagine those those 40 days with Yahweh Shai after he rose from the dead. You know, and he didn't show himself to everybody. He showed himself to specific people. Okay, as a matter of fact, when you get the book of uh, Acts, the 10th chapter, just to expound on that. Acts 10 and 30. Let's see here. And 37, the word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached to the Israelites. How God anointed Yahweh of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good things, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for the Most High was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem amongst the circumcision, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him have God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, Right. He didn't show himself to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before the most high, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. All right. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of the most high to be judge of the of quick and dead. And to him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sin. So there you go. <laughs> after he rose he showed himself openly okay as you say in an nlt not to the general public but unto us whom the most high have uh chosen in advance okay to be his witnesses we were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead so that actually happened so can you imagine that that time frame so going back to the point here in acts 1 this is uh, after that 40 days, pretty much, okay, and 40 nights where he was with, you know, the brothers and the sisters. He's getting ready to go back to the right-hand side of the Most High. So this is the, 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 the talking point. It says, when they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And this was a mindset around that time. A lot of the followers of Yahweh thought that the fact that he uh, came and Fulfilled the prophecy of him offering himself up as a sacrifice. He was born through the loins and lineage of David. He fulfilled all of those prophecies. All right. But we know there's more prophecies that he has to fulfill when he comes back as an angelic power of force from the sky. But they thought that that was it. So a lot of the followers of Yahweh Shai got depressed. Some fell out. Some went back to the old covenant way of thinking. You see, that's why the book of Hebrews was written. So, so the church can understand, look, this is the man. You see, in the book of Thessalonians, Paul said, look, don't let no man deceive you. That day won't come until there'll be a falling away first 70 AD and so forth. So the church had to be galvanized because they thought that the end was coming back then. OK, and they were depressed. So it says at this time, will you restore the kingdom again to Israel? Now, if, 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 
If the answer was yes, would the heathen have joint rulership with the Israelites in that kingdom? No, because the kingdom that they're talking about is the throne of David, which Solomon forwarded for 40 years. OK, but through his sin, the kingdom was rent and we went through various captivities. The Assyrian Babylonian. OK, the Persians and the Medes. OK, the 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 uh, the uh, Greeks and the Romans. Right now, what we're reading is them in that Roman, that fourth beast, that captivity. You see, but according to Daniel's uh, 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 vision and Daniel, the seventh chapter, it was going to be the revival of that fourth beast that would mark the end, not that particular fourth beast, Rome itself, but the revival of Rome, which was going to come through a Renaissance period. All right. Which would lead all the way up through eventually the Spanish, the French and the British to America, which is Babylon, the great, the final captivity. So that's when the kingdom is going to be restored as Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. And we're going to get Revelation, the 18th chapter. So, no, you know, you have to set the, the tone for what's being said, you know. So when they will come together, OK, after, you know. It says they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? <laughs> and he said unto them, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. For it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power. See, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and in all Judea. See, the, they, they went and preached amongst the circumcision first. OK, you can see that in the, in the, as they were preaching in the book of Acts. All right. And in Samaria, eventually it was opened up to the Gentiles. OK, the Israelite foreigners who were turning from idols. First, they went amongst one second here. First, they went amongst the circumcision. Give me one second. OK, so he told them, look, let's read it again. But ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Spirit is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem. All right. And in all Judea. OK. And in Samaria. And to the uttermost parts of the earth. OK, so let's read this in the NLT. Now, mind you, they're in the east. OK, they're in the east while this is being said. All right. The, the eastern region, the, the east. OK, Acts one and eight in the NLT. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that happened in the very next chapter. OK, the, 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 the Pentecost. Right. And you will be my witnesses to go testify of Yahweh Shai, testify that he raised from the dead. You know, go and prophesy of, you know, the, his coming and all of that. Telling people about me everywhere in Jer Jerusalem, throughout Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the question is, when did the apostles go and preach to the ends of the earth? OK, where, where, where is that record? All right. Like it says here in the book of uh, Revelation, the 10th chapter. One second. In Revelation, the 10th chapter. <laughs> John, the revelator, who we know died on the Isle of Patmos. He was in his old age. He had caught all kind of hell. He was confined to slavery. All right. On the Isle of Patmos. And look what he's told here in the book of Revelation, the uh, 10th chapter and 11th verse. As a matter of fact, Revelation 10 and 9, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be sweet in thy mouth. And that's how this truth is, is sweet when you first taste it. But the bitterness of having to walk as an Israelite in, you know, Babylon, the great, it, it then gets bitter. OK, it says, but it shall be sweet in thy mouth as honey. I took the little book out of his hand. And ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And now is he literally eating the Bible? No, that's him ingesting this truth. All right. The, the visions he's received, the, 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 the understanding, man. Eat this roll, as Ezekiel says. And as soon as I ate it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again. OK, before many nation people and nations and tongues and kings. Now, this was the last of Yahweh Shah's direct followers of the 12 
that was alive. And he was told this, look, you must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, and tongues and kings. Heavy. Now, going back to Acts 1, when did the disciples preach unto the uttermost part of the earth? Let's look up the word uttermost part of the earth. Okay, and what would be the uttermost part of the earth from the region they were in when this was being told unto them? The northwestern hemisphere, Babylon the Great, which is called what? The land of the north. Okay, so, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, the northwestern hemisphere. So the word uttermost part, all right, eschatos, eschatology, end time. Okay, it says extreme, last in place. Eschatos, all right. Last in time or place, last in series of places, last in temporal succession. The last, the last referring to time of space, the uttermost part, the end of the earth, rank, all right. Grade of worth, lowest, all right. As you can see here, the latter end, okay. Now, in eschatology or eschatos, which is end time prophecy, what what nation would be would be built up, okay, and ultimately uh reign supreme in the earth. All right. Babylon the Great. All right. As a matter of fact, what we're gonna do is um get the book of uh Hendermos. Let me type in Hendermos. It's Jeremiah fifty, I believe. I think I know where it's at. Jeremiah the fiftieth chapter. Okay. Jeremiah fifty. In around 11, maybe. Boom. Babylon, sure fall. Now, in the Bible, you have the Babel, Babel, okay, which started with Nimrod. That was Nimrod, all right? You can get that in Genesis 10 and 11, the Tower of Babel, okay? That was in the region of Sumeria. Babel means confusion. Then you have the Neo-Babylonian Empire, all right, which was, uh, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Assyrians, okay, where we were captive, you know, uh, Daniel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all right? But then you have Babylon the Great, a future uh, uh, captivity, the final captivity of the Israelites, okay, which would be what? Controlled by the, uh, 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 the final captivity of the Israelites, which would be controlled by the Edomites. So let's get this, Jeremiah 50 and 11, because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O ye destroyers of mine heritage, because ye are grown as fat as the heifer at grass and bellows as bulls. Your mother shall be sore confounded. All right. Talking about British because America came out of the Brits, out of the UK, out of British. All right. That's the 13 colonies led to what we have today. Babylon the Great. It says she that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hinder most of the nations shall be a wilderness OK, a dry land in the desert, the hindermost of the nations. Let's look up the word hindermost. OK, because the Lord said we will be what brought. OK, we would be teaching or the, the, the apostles would be teaching in the uttermost part of the earth, the ends of the world in end time prophecy, man. That word hindermost is Aha, wait, Aharayath. Aharayath. All right. After part, end, end, issue, event, latter time, prophetic for future, posterity, last, hindermost. So, yeah, physically, it is the hindermost of the nations from where the uh, actual Israelites were told that by Yahweh Shai, but in prophetic time, all right, it is the latter times where the Israelites will be in this specific captivity preaching and prophesying okay as a matter of fact let's get the book let's keep reading okay the 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 hinder most of the nation shall be a wilderness a dry land and a desert because of the wrath of yahweh it shall not be inhabited but it shall be wholly desolate everyone that goeth by babylon shall be astonished at her plagues so there you go this is speaking of a future prophecy okay now the question the apostle uh gabar asks is are are the actual apostles within this captivity or were here teaching and preaching either were here or or are here now 
And the answer is yes. Okay. The prophets, according to the book of, uh, as a matter of fact, let's get uh, Jeremiah 29, then we'll get Revelation the 18th chapter. As a matter of fact, what we'll do is we'll get Revelation the 18th chapter first. All right. Because this is what Babylon is falling, the fall of Babylon in this chapter. And it goes through a succession of, you know, prophecies on how it will fall, things that will happen, you know, the how it's going to be destroyed. OK. One hour is going to take one hour in a single moment. All the wealth of the city is gone and all the captain and the merchant ships and their passengers and sailors and crews will stand at a distance. OK, so Pete, they, 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 the, the nations are going to see the destruction of Babylon the Great. They're going to see the chariot invasion. OK, total chaos is going to be happening on the earth, man. And the elect are going to be beamed up at this time now. What's said? What's said here? As everybody else is crying and, you know, like, damn, you know, Babylon's destroyed. What's said here? Revelation 18 and 20. Rejoice over how her over her thou heaven. OK. Which the heavens. All right. Uh, is, is symbolic of the elect. You see, because the, 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 the spiritual realm is connected to what? The, the spiritual temple. The Holy Spirit, Rahakwadash. Okay? Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Showing you that the apostles and prophets will be here. God have avenged you, okay, on her. Let's read it in NLT. Rejoice over her faith, O heaven, and people of God, and apostles and prophets. For at last God has judged her for your sakes. You see that? So they would be here catching hell. Okay. As a matter of fact, Daniel, Daniel, the uh, seventh chapter. Bro. Niggas, boy. <sighs> well, you gotta. Uh, you, <laughs> niggas are something else, man. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just let that ride. Daniel the seventh chapter. In the uh, <laughs> forgot my talking point. Daniel seven. And uh, speaking of the final you know, uh, the revival of Rome, the final beast, what, it, what what he would do, okay? Let's see here. Daniel 7 and 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So the saints would be in this final captivity, all right? But the teachers, the prophets would be here as well, the apostles, yes, the ones who Yahweh Shai was talking to face to face in latter times, they would be in this captivity raised up to preach the word. OK, so he would speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and thou shalt and think to change times and laws and they shall be given unto his hand. All right. Until a time of times and dividing of times, man, that 350 year period where we were completely through. All right. Uh, but no Holy Spirit, no understanding. OK, from around 16, 19 to around the 60s. All right. Where the Lord sent down the Holy Spirit, the Rahakwadash, and we stood up on our feet as a great spiritual army. And from that point, you know, Abba Bivens uh, uh, till now, look, look at how this truth has transformed the earth. That's through the Holy Spirit. That's through the prophets being raised up. OK, and this is the, the, the captivity where judgment is going to sit. OK, as a matter of fact, let's get the book of. Uh, Lamentations, Lamentations, the fourth chapter, and the uh, last two verses, it says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup shall be passed through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O 
O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins. See that? So the final captivity of the Israelites is going to be through Esau. All right. The Edomites are running this uh, revival of Rome. They ran the fourth beast and they run the revival of it, which is the Roman Empire. But the prophets are definitely here preaching the apostles and prophets. As a matter of fact, let's get the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. OK, Jeremiah 29. And. Let's see here. Jeremiah 29. And because the Lord said, I will, I will, I will send you pastors according to my heart. See? He said, Your eyes shall see your teachers. Okay? At the forefront of that is the apostles and prophets, man. Jeremiah 29 and 13, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search me with all your heart, which he's going to give you a heart to search him, a mind to search him. And I will be found of you, saith Yahweh, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all nations and from all the places whither I have driven you. Okay, and when you go into, uh, like the Apostle Gabar brought out, okay, when you go into where we were driven, Deuteronomy 28 and 64, Let's see here. Four, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even to the other. And there shall thou serve other gods, which neither thou nor thou nor thy fathers knew. So we would be scattered to the ends of the earth, man. I believe there's another one. All right. I believe there's another one. All right, but that's it. We would be scattered from one end of earth to another, okay? And we would worship other gods. We became Gentiles. We fell away, okay? There's various scriptures that go into that, that we would be scattered. Uh, let's see here. Man. Jeremiah 16 and 13, therefore I will cast you out of this land and to a land that ye know not, neither uh, ye nor your fathers, ye shall serve other gods day and night. All right. Deuteronomy 28 and 36. Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, King David himself. <laughs> That's bugging people out. See, but the true church, understanding the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, these things don't drive us crazy. The Christians are just like, oh, my God, how could you say that? Now, IUIC was asked this by a Christian. Who's the king? And what did they say? Uh, uh, the white man. Just better off saying you didn't know. We'll, we'll get back to you. than to just blurt out something and, 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 and blunder it. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou, which, which, uh, which thou shall set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shall thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So we were brought into this final captivity, okay? <laughs> into the land of our captivity, man. Uh, but going back to the point, Jeremiah 29 and 13, and ye shall seek me with, and find me when ye shall search me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, said Yahweh, and I will turn away your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where they have driven thee, said the Lord. I will bring you again into a place where I cause you to be carried away captive, the promised land, because ye have said the Lord have raised us up prophets in Babylon. All right. Be, meaning you believe on the word that he, he, he sent via his prophets, the apostles and prophets. An apostle means to be sent. See. Know that know that thus said the Lord King that sitteth upon the throne of David. And of all the people that sit in that dwells in the city and of your brethren that are going forth with you in the captivity. There you go. So the Lord, the Lord raised us up prophets in Babylon. OK. And when Babylon is destroyed, Revelation 18 chapter says that the apostles and prophets are going to rejoice over her because they would be here <laughs> serving hardcore captivity. OK. Catching hell. But they will receive the Holy Spirit, Rahakwadas, to preach 
and constantly prophesy against this devil, man. Revelation, the 14 chapter, the new song, the new song, okay, is being sung, okay, synonymously while the devil in Revelation, the 13 chapter is trying to establish his image, his beast and his mark. There would be a, a, a hardcore stern message opposed to that. And that would be uh, 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 through the apostles and prophets, man. So the, yes, the, the answer to the apostle Gabar's question is that yes, the apostles and prophets <laughs> or the apostles, all right, the direct 12, <laughs> all right, were either uh, uh, here in America preaching at some point or they, they, some of them are here now. Okay, some men say that they are the, 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 the original 12. We'll see. You know, that's a bold, you know, that's a bold, you know, uh, thing to put on yourself, but we'll see. All right. But the, 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 the notion that they're here is not wrong. Revelation 18 and 20 rejoice over her, thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for God hath avenged you on her and a mighty ang angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and it shall be found no more at all. Okay. <laughs> hey, the Lord is going to take this place down, man. Okay. And the voice of harpers and all musicians and pipers, none of these parades, none of these marches, none of this stupid entertainment shall be heard no more at all in thee. No craftsmen or the scientists of whoever craft he be shall be found any more at all in thee. No trades in the sound of a millstone. The, the grinding is going to be gone. Shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the sound of a millstone is, you know, symbolic of a flourishing city. Okay. Things are moving. It says, and the light of a candle shall no more at all shine in thee. The candle of the wicked, the light of the wicked shall be put out in the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall no more at all be any stupid marriages okay well a complete loser nigga and a woman who's on her uh, uh 83rd rod you know she's walking around in a white dress complete whore and he you know i do and, and all this bullshit standing in between a, a, a pork chop eating nigga talking about the by the power invested in me by the by the state of Illinois, right? I now pronounce you husband and none of that shit no more, okay? <laughs> Excuse me. And thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were the nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all that were slain upon the earth, man. So there you go. And this is uh, speaking of the final captivity, end time prophecy, man. So the answer to the question, uh, should, you know, hopefully y'all were edified by that. Is yes, you know, the apostles and prophets are definitely uh, here, man. Uh, going back to the video that the apostle Gabar did. Okay. What was the question? Okay, and watch his video as well. Did Yahweh's original apostles come to America? Okay, because at this time, when you get uh, the book of Acts, we'll finish it off. Acts, the first chapter, you know, after he ascended, you know, they were like, damn. So he went back, you know, to the, he went back to the, uh, to the most high, you know, and then hey, they, they did their thing, man, you know, but you had the 12, as a matter of fact, the upper room, Acts 1. In 12, after Yahweh Shai went into heaven, they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is uh, from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they would come up in, they went up into an upper room in a boat with Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. Okay. And these all continue 
with one accord, with prayer and supplication with, with the women and Mary, the mother of Yahweh Shah, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of, and said, and then it gives you the number of them. Okay, the number of the names together were about 120. So there were 120 uh, disciples or apostles. Okay, and we don't know the names, of all of them. Some of those men are back. They're back here today. This is the point. Okay, and they're prophesying. Some are going to be martyrs. Which you have men saying no members of the elect are going to die. All right, really is no such thing as death, but some of us will be beheaded. As we're preaching this message, you know, the the don't take the, the chip, don't bow, you know, it comes with a, a great price, the doom for the worshipers of the beast. OK, for, but with that message means what? Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints here. Are they that keep the commandments of the most high in the faith of Yahweh Shai. NLT. This means that God's holy people must endure persecution, preaching this message, obeying patiently obeying his commands and maintaining their faith in Yahweh Shai. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. OK, so, yes. OK, these men are on earth preaching the word. Some of them are going to be martyrs. Some are going to be on the earth, you know, in, a, in whatever situation they're in when Yahweh Shai returns and they're going to be delivered, man. So. Hopefully I'll edify it. On to the next.